Hey guys, how's it going? It is Saturday morning, uh, so I don't know how many people are going to see this, but I just wanted to let you know that grades for the week were up, um, and some comments about assignments overall and things like that. So first things first, I think everyone did a really nice job this week uh, with their assignments. The discussion posts especially were was very interesting, and I think people had a lot of really uh, interesting things to say, good insight. And all that. I, I want people to realize uh, that research methods and the topic that we're doing this summer is not necessarily easy, um, and doing it online, I don't think, makes it any easier. So just give yourself some, uh, be patient with this stuff, and it, things will make sense more and more as the semester goes on. Things will will click. Yeah, it's. I know it can be kind of uh, confusing in the beginning, but there will come a time during the semester where things will really start to make sense, I think. I'm confident that that's how normally these things work with research methods, and uh, especially in, in this online setting. It's, um, it, it may take a little longer, but I, I do think uh, people uh, things will click. Uh, and the other thing is we're, we're learning about a lot of different methods, so quantitative and qualitative and things like that. So it's a lot of stuff going on. So just stay patient. And if you do have specific questions, again, email me. I'm happy to, uh, to help with those. Look at my notes here of, of things I want to talk about. Um, yeah, so in terms of grading, so assignments I grade for completeness I grade for effort I grade for you know, correctness this first week was really uh, about effort and um, completeness not so much how correct you were and what you said and things like that as the semester goes on I will be more critical of those things and provide more specific feedback about um, where you're all off you know, in terms of um, the actual content but in the beginning here it's just a matter of getting your feet wet and things like that so just know as the semester goes on I will be getting more critical uh, with the specifics as you get more advanced in the course um, so a couple other things I want to talk about in terms of research there's two kinds of research so this week I asked people to discuss research interests and almost everyone when they were talking about them discussed practical research okay so there are two kinds of research really there's practical research and there is basic research also known as applied or basic research now you hear the word basic and you think that means simple it it doesn't basic research means research that is doesn't necessarily have a practical or specific purpose. So a lot of you, what most people did, and it's totally understandable, it's what you come in um, thinking research is, is you come with a practical problem or a practical thing. For example, um, do more people drink Coke or Pepsi? And you do research about it. Or how do boys and girls differ in the types of Xbox games they buy. Right? So these are specific questions about specific things looking to solve a specific problem or answer a specific question. Okay, That's what we call applied research or practical research. Basic research is what is done in um, kind of scholarly journals and things like that, kind of research that we do in academia, which is not about necessarily a solving a specific real world problem or but it's more about adding to the scientific literature. It's about understanding people. It's about theory. It's about how things work. An example in media or communication would be how violent media impacts um, aggressive behavior. Right? So you see, it's not about a particular product or solving um, or knowing, but it's about how do humans act, right? How, another example in, in my field is, you know, how do personality traits impact people's willingness to discuss politics, right? So 
that would be what's called basic research. So where we're developing theories about how humans behave. Right? So I want people to start trying to think in those terms as we move on. Not that there's anything wrong with applied research. And many of you, um, you know, if you don't go on for a, a doctorate or get into, you know, uh, take the research track especially, you, you wouldn't be doing this kind of research. Um, but it is important and it's what I'm, what I'm looking to be training people to do that kind of research as well. The former, the applied research is, is great. Obviously it, it solves a problem. It, it helps uh, a particular thing. It's the kind of research that you would do if you had a job in a marketing department at, for a company or for, um, you know, something like that. If you worked, they would have these things. You want to know how do we boost sales, right? So you need to do research uh, for your company or, you know, uh, anything like that. It's just, it's the different kinds of work, right? We would hope that those companies or organizations would use the research that's done by uh, us people doing, quote, basic research, using the theories and things that we find to help them. They can then apply that to their work to, to figure things out. Now, I'll be honest with you, doing research for companies working in marketing departments, working in um, analytics for, you know, Google, whatever the case may be, where they do this applied research, you'll make a lot more money than you do in academia doing um, scientific, basic scientific research. It's just different and it, it all depends on what you're interested in and what you're what you want to do neither is right or wrong they're just they're just different but I, I do want you to start thinking in terms of theory and and instead of practical research only both applied and basic kinds of research with that being said it's also uh, we'll get into it when we start talking about sampling later but knowing the difference between what's called a population inference and a process inference. So when you make a population inference, you have a sample of people and you ask them questions or whatever the case may be, and you try to then extrapolate what you found about that sample to the greater population. A uh, simple example of that would be, you know, um, presidential polling before an election. You know, they ask a thousand people, you know, who are you going to vote for? And then they try to then make a prediction about the entire population based on that sample. Right? That's a population inference. And there's very specific sampling techniques that you have to do to have any chance of being accurate in your prediction. A population inference isn't saying, hey, I'm going to take this sample and then make a prediction about how everyone behaves. It, let me give you one more example of a population inference. If you want to know are Americans favorite, what's America's favorite ice cream flavor? And you sampled a thousand people and you asked them about their favorite ice cream choice. And you determined from that sample that uh, mint chocolate chip was their favorite ice cream. It's because it is the best and it is my favorite too. Um, you would then try to make a claim based on your sample that America's favorite you know, ice cream is mint chocolate chip. Now, depending on your sample, depending on how you ask the questions, depending on all that, will dictate if you have any uh, accuracy in making that greater claim. And again, we'll talk more about this as the semester goes on. But that's taking your sample and then, again, extrapolating those findings to a, the larger population. That's not so much what we do in academia. That is what you're doing in more uh, applied research. In the basic research, we're looking at process inferences, right? Again, it's how something works. It, it's to say, hey, we sample these 300 people. And we want to know, does, taking an easy example again, does um, watching violent media lead people to be more aggressive? Now, our sample may not be representative of the whole population. It's Maybe we have 300 college students and we have them do an experiment or whatever, and, and we find evidence that yes, when they watched more violent television, those people were more aggressive. We can't say, based on this small population of college students, which is a very specific you know, population, they are not representative of 
Americans. They're not representative of even all 18 to 22 year olds. They're representative of really just that pop, that specific sample. But what we can say is that, yeah, we found evidence that in this population, in this case, that it did happen. Therefore, there is some balance to the claim that watching violent media can lead people to be more aggressive. Now, we can't say it's everyone, we can't say what specifically, but we've added some evidence that in certain situations, yes, this is in fact happening. Now, how do we then build even more theory? Well, you keep doing these different studies with different populations, and you study it in different ways, and when you, you keep building up, you keep building, adding a little bit, adding a little bit, so that when you have enough studies with enough different populations from around, you know, enough different places that you can then say at some point, look, there's strong evidence that this is in fact happening. And here's how it's happening. Here's why it's happening. What happens is that when people watch this violent media, it turns on certain um, you know, areas of the brain that lead people to have these aggressive, or whatever the theory is, right? We're, we're trying to explain why it happens, not just describing what we see that you know, yeah, it leads people to be more aggressive, but we want to know how it happens or why it happens. That's what makes a good theory. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a great weekend.